This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. With all the same fun of IT Pro TV, ACI is amplified with new solutions for all your IT training needs. Entertain your team while they learn. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit listeners who complete the form can receive as much as 65% off an IT Pro enterprise solution plan. You'll get the proper quote based on the size of your team. Uh, how is AI going, Ben? <laughs> is it still the next big thing? It, it, so, uh, I would say it is, but you got to go through the hype cycles, right? We're so, in a hype cycle. That's, I think that's a good point. Yes. It's, it's for sure you have a hype cycle, but the question that everyone asks is, is it more like, um, let's say tokens in crypto where like you just have a big crash mm -hmm. or is it more like the internet or mobile phones where you don't say like, hi, I'm starting an internet company today, but every company is an internet company. Uh, I think most investors and most people in the Valley think AI is number two. And at a certain point, it'll be great when there's not all of the hype around things, but in the interim, there's going to be a bunch of events happening this fall in like the San Francisco area. Ted's doing an AI conference next month. There's still a lot of stuff happening. Boy, it's rare we get a title so early in the show, but I think we're going to call this show AI is number two. Is that okay with? <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's, out of context, it has a very different meaning. Here's the, uh, the famous Gartner hype cycle where you have a technology trigger. Then you go to the peak of inflated expectations and then the trough of disillusionment as reality sets in. But then, if you're lucky, I think Bitcoin never got out of the trough of disillusionment. If you're lucky, you get the slope of enlightenment and the plateau of productivity. That's number two. And you expect that we'll... Where are we now, though, in the AI hype cycle on the Gartner chart? It is really hard to know. And it could be on the... like. It's definitely not as high as it was before. We've passed the peak of inflated expectations, but I think we're still pretty high up, aren't we? We're probably still pretty high yeah. up. The trough of disillusionment awaits. It'll, uh, I don't know what it'll look like, though. That's the hard part. Like, what does the trough actually look like? See, I think one of the problems is that uh, at the peak of inflated expectations, you get all the AI bros saying, you know, this stuff is great, but watch out. It's an existential threat to humanity, which it's clearly not, but okay. Uh, that's, that's to me, that's absolute hype. That's them saying, you know, don't worry about the fact that black people face recognition is terrible and they get thrown in jail in a higher proportion because of it. Don't overlook the AI hallucinations and all that stuff. It's a threat to humanity. And it's kind of hyping up this, potential of it that to me is at the peak i think the trough of disillusionment is going to come when people say oh it's just a toy it's just a party trick it's not doing nothing that uh you know it's just a like a three-year-old could do it's and and it's so much wrong stuff that it's dopey i feel like i've been i'm there i'm in that trough already <laughs> right now but, but what you do what people don't realize is the AI that we use every single day without even thinking about it, okay? So, I don't know, Leo, I know you. You got iPhone 15 Pro Max, didn't you? I sure did. I arrived on okay. Friday in my hand here, right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. me too. And is that AI, though, really? Yes. yes. Some of it is. 100%. Okay. When you, when you go, like, when we were back, I think it was like iPhone 10 or whatever, when we first got the... Uh, the um the picture you take the picture and then like a second later the picture goes boom hey look at me I'm way cuter than you thought that's 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 it is I mean, that, wait, wait 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 uh, we used to call that computational photography and this is my yeah. problem is that and this is the same thing happened with you know blockchain and everything is is you start talking about computation as if it's artificial intelligence and it's just well, it, more, more it's computation. So the machine learning part of it is AI. It has the word learning directly in it. Yeah. The neural engine part of it is AI because what they do is they take the nodes and they take the information from all the other pictures available to come up with the best picture, right? So from way back to Microsoft Snapdragon, which is super old, you were taking all the other pictures and then coming up with information to make the next picture better. 
a hack. I remember I that. Mean, it, yeah, Snapdragon. I remember that. Oh, so, I mean, people are talking about chatbots. Chatbot is the least of it. And if you dig into the medical community for just like a half a toe, you didn't even mix to the whole toe, just the nail in, and you see what they're doing with patient outcomes because of the amount of data that they can run through real quick and come up with better health plan scenarios, that's all AI too. Oh, oh come on, wait a minute. Because I remember IBM said Watson's going to be the best diagnostician ever. And it was a flop and they had to stop doing it. Yeah, but IBM totally oversold that, and they had ads on TV about it. Yeah, five or six years ago, way way before it was. So it maybe it's better. Now, it's better now. Is that what? Hundred percent. It's for sure better now. Like, okay, okay. I, I do this when I do I do these presentations, and I always like show where generative AI, which is all the chat bots, the chat GPTs, and it's a very tiny portion of that AI universe because it's within uh, neural networks, which is within deep learning, which is within machine learning. It is a big umbrella term, but. I think one thing we keep forgetting is there are some really cool applications like uh, to change the world. I was speaking at Climate Week this week in New York or last week, and there's these entrepreneurs and all they're doing is like building really advanced machine learning models to like predict what ocean is happening in the ocean. So you can figure out like what things need to be done to save it, uh, figure out how to reduce carbon. You know, and these are not the things that we're talking about every day in the news, the, the chatbots and the all that sort of thing. But they are real AI, and they are really, really cool, and they are really advancing really quickly. And I like those things a lot yeah. the most. Because That's where you're going to get to the plateau of productivity with, with applications like that. So yeah. let's be clear, though. I think that, uh, especially in popular media, AI gets confused with programming, with computers. So let's be clear. What, what makes something AI? You said, Doc Rock, it's machine learning. Well, so, well, anytime you can take a bunch of data and have the data start to model itself based off of its previous data, that would be some artificially intelligent. I think of uh, I think of uh, Alpha Zero, which was um, Google's uh, uh, program that played chess and Go, and it it they didn't give it the rule. They gave it the rules to go have play Go. That's all they gave it, and it played itself in four hours a billion games, and learned. How to play Go from that end up beating a very high level pro Go master, uh, and that's to me that's a, that's a machine that you just tell it what the rules are and it will figure out how to play. And it did that. I think that's pure AI. I think you could say I, th I would agree that that's AI. That's no human I mean, wrote an algorithm for that. There's AI. There's machine learning, which is part of AI. There's generative AI, which is a form of machine learning. So it's not one thing. I, I think there'll be all kinds of different cycles. Or, but is there you, some I, is there some simple definition that we can use so that we can distinguish it from I, coding? I've, I give my personal definition, but there's no consensus. Okay. I usually say it is any type of computer technology that is specifically trying to mimic uh, human behavior. So specifically trying to mimic the human ability to process large amounts of information and make new understandings from it. I don't think that's AI um, necessarily, though, Ben, because Eliza, which everybody agrees was not AI, was a decision tree, the early uh, psychiatrist that's built into Emacs. That was a program, pure and simple. But that was not agreed. But that it was, was not, not AI. It was trying to, was was trying trying to mimic to humans, out. though. It was fake but, AI. Fake AI. It was fake AI. But, but like, for example, okay. the chat GPT <laughs> stuff is... Uh, there, it is It is just writing its kind of own code in itself. Basically, all it's really doing is predicting using, you know, this constant learning that it's done, the next most likely word to say. That is definitely some AI. It's just yeah. like... Uh, but I, that's where I think to, the machine learning or the training itself stuff is important. So, so ChatGPT is a large language model, and it learned from a large corpus, mostly from the internet, of content how to do very good autocorrect because that's that's actually what it does it's very good autocorrect but it learned that from a corpus of of information on its own nobody said whenever you see the you should follow it with a noun nobody told it that it figured that out so i'd agree right. with you that's ai the problem is and harry you've lived through some of these but i've lived through them all the ai winters we've seen this hype cycle right. before it's not the first time 
Yeah, I wrote a story a few years ago about this actually really good documentary that was on CBS in 1960 about the future of AI. And a lot of it actually was on target, except for the fact they thought that they would make enormous progress, like by about 1964. They really envisioned getting to the stuff we're only figuring out now in just a few years. So the, the expectations are out of often out of whack with the reality. But I do feel like in the long run, it may, may not matter all that much. Uh, that we're confused about what AI is and isn't because you really know this stuff matters when we stop talking about it um, in the same way that um, people don't talk about PCs as a thing that much anymore. Um, the internet, like Ben said, is is not a specific category of business. It's, it's all businesses. Um, 20 years ago, people talked a lot about mobile. Now everything is mobile, so we don't talk about it. And, you know, I really think that AI in the long run is just really sophisticated software. And I would not be surprised if five to 10 years from now, you just don't see that term used all that much anymore. And, and that's when we know that it really matters. Agreed. Yeah, that's kind of what we were saying. That's that's the plateau right there in the yeah. uh, Gartner yes. Hype Circle. It, once, it, once it starts to plateau, it's yeah. ju it's just the, the air that we breathe, and yeah. uh, that's when it's most relevant. <laughs> yeah. You, oh, you I, think it's I think it's reasonable, though, to try to define it and to, and to pinpoint it because uh, when you are in the, the peak of inflated expectations, there's a lot of conflation between what a computer does and what AI is and what's genuine AI and, and what is isn't. I mean, some peaks have already come and gone, like when um, Microsoft launched the new Bing in February, I think. There were people talking about how maybe, you know, Google would be a goner. And this was great news for, for Bing, and they could make enormous inroads in market share very quickly. As far as I can tell, none of that has actually happened, and Google is even has somewhat higher market share and Bing slightly lower than it did. So um, that peak has already come and gone, and I'm sure there are other ones that are still to come, like like for instance, with some of this productivity stuff, um, such as the tools which Google and Microsoft have announced and shown, but are kind of only now getting around to launching. I, I think I expect that those will not be quite as transformative as people think they are right now, but nobody knows for sure because they aren't quite here yet. The next There's generation that we're going to see of ChatGPT and of Google's right. BART is what they call multimodal, right? Google calls it Gemini. Um, they've started showing it to people. Open AI, I don't, is chat GPT-5 multimodal? I guess even 4 has some multimodal. What is multimodal? What does that mean? Multimodal is, means that it's not just you, you typing stuff and getting text back. Um, images might start to be part of it. Uh -huh. um, it's a little bit like in, in how in the early days of Google search, you search and you just got plain links back. You still get those links back, but you know Google gives all you all these different things, such as images and videos and so forth. And um, little by little, we're seeing AI move in a general direction where it still is kind of a, a chat experience, but it's, it's not just about text conversations. But it, but 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 isn't hallucination still a problem? Uh, it's a huge problem. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. It's less. It's getting better, but it's still a huge problem. So it's, again, it really depends on the way you use this stuff, right? If you're relying on it to write you a complex essay or to write you like legal documentation, no, it's not going to work. But if you're relying on it to like give you ideas, so like as an example, lots of students are now using it uh, to uh, ask questions like you know, how do I solve this math problem, which they used to talk to their teachers about. It's interesting, actually, looking at the data. Yeah, but I've been using GPT. Wolfram Alpha to do that for seven years. Is that AI when Wolfram Alpha does it? I guess it is. It has, it, it has AI, but yeah. it's more about the interface. The AI, some of this stuff already existed. It's just ChatGPT gave a really nice interface that everyone yeah, could but understand. but you might well get the wrong answer from ChatGPT. Because what, what I understand people like Sam Altman saying is it's not written to be for factual accuracy it's not when you have an autocorrect it's not checking for fact it doesn't even understand what it's saying so it can't ask the wrong question you get the wrong answer but if you ask the question right nine times out of ten you get the right answer no but so, what the tenth time is a problem <laughs> it's, well, the thing it's not is, a good search get, tool because if, humans get this stuff wrong just as much too i will exactly. say this the the traffic for jet gpt has increased significantly uh, since the beginning of September, end of August, guess I why? I thought it was dying. Students all came back. I it, all oh, the students came back. Because of uh, the school. School. Uh, school yeah. 
I want Huge to say, audience. With uh, people, right? If I ask you the wrong question, right, or I formulate the question wrong, you're going to get a wrong answer. So here's a prime example. I used to do something really dumb. I used to be like, hey, Karen, what do you want to eat? And she's like, I don't know. Well, you decide, okay, let's go get pizza. I don't want to eat pizza. Now I say, here's your choices. Pizza <laughs> or burger. Which one do you want? And she'll go, pasta. Boom. See, I was not AI. I learned, I machine learned, don't ask her an open-ended question because you're never going to get an answer. But if I give her options, she'll pick one. It's the, the same other- thing. Jack GBT works this. I'm God, do not tell her I said that. <laughs> I'm not trying to sleep at Leo's house. But you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a long flight. Let me tell you, you don't want to sleep here. <laughs> you right? You will get the answer that you're looking for. And it's kind of the same thing. And and I think the difference between Wolfram Alpha and, and Chapter GBT when you're talking about a math thing is it will tell you how it came to those and you can learn from that. There is a possibility to learn from it. The other day, I was trying to look up when a, a well-known person um, went to college and where he went to college, and I asked ChatGPT, and every time I asked that, it would give me something that was wrong, but close enough that you wouldn't know unless you already knew what the answer was, and I, I just sat there, and I had it generated over and over again, and every single time, it, it was wrong, but in, in a way that kind of made sense. And uh, That's without, dangerous. Uh, it's incredibly dangerous because it, it not only gets stuff wrong, it often gets it wrong in a way that, that sounds like it could be true. So, and if you already know the answer, then what are you doing asking ChatGPT in the first place? It, it, it really does depend on the kind of question you ask. As Doc said, it, it like for example, if you're asking questions about you know the stuff that most students would be asking about, like how you solve certain kinds of math problems, it'll get it right pretty much every time because there's so much information about those things it's always going to almost pull the right answer for those kinds of questions. If you're asking more specific questions where there's a l- very little data on the internet or it's more new, like uh, details about an individual person who may not be super famous, uh, it's more likely to get those wrong. And the True. thing is, I think what's happening right now is that uh, certain, like especially students and certain people are working around where its limitations are uh, and are getting more out of it. And it is nowhere near perfect, but depending on like the kind of like, work you do with the person that you are you can still get a lot out of it i just always marveled the fact that a year ago this thing didn't exist and now like this thing exists and you could just go and brainstorm with it about ideas for your next show or for your newsletter or for whatever and it'll be awake 24 7 and it has access to the, uh, all the knowledge of the human race and of course it'll get it wrong sometimes but is it ending in 2021 wait a minute though but it's september 2021 it stops. Actually, that's, the plugins <laughs> plug in. I, I just did it where I had to do brainstorming and I did it for a class. I was teaching my my people on my live stream how to do brainstorming using ChatGPT. And I was telling it to use different brainstorming models. Like I had to do scamper model. I had to do six hats thinking model and that kind of stuff. It nails. It nails every time because you're asking a question that's like that. But I will also admit to Harry's point. I was showing someone the the built in biases people say of chat GPT and I had to correct that. So I did an example to prove the built in bias. I was helping a friend of mine who is a, um, a black history major. And we were like, let's look up some of the top black female poets in you know, history. And it couldn't pull that list together. And she's like, see, ChatGPT is filed. And I was like, no, the internet is missing majority of that information. You and I know because we have parents and books and things like that. But the internet doesn't actually know because that shows the bias that's built into the internet. That's not ChatGPT's fault. However, we can give it these documents, right? So we have these PDFs. Let's throw these PDFs at it and tell it to re-ask the question. And now that we've seeded it with the proper information, it's there. So what it does help highlight is some of the biases that are just built into the internet. So yeah, maybe Harry, the reason why it couldn't find the direct answer to the person that you were looking for is the information about that person isn't well spread or whatever. This is true. This is a well-known person, but not so well that this information was all over the internet, which which is why I went to chat GPT in the first place. But I, I did it kind of as a test because I already knew that chat GPT is actually not all that great for getting information, which is difficult to find with Google. If it's if Google can find it, then chat GPT can also find it. And if Google struggles, then there's nothing magical about chat GPT for the most part. 